This video is a continuation of my Jet Set Radio Future playthrough, but is also a guide to unlocking all the secret characters in the game. If you'd like to find out how to get Cube, Jazz, and the Doom Riders, as well as clearing Dogenzaka Hill, that's covered in the previous episode, which is linked in the description. This is a comprehensive guide to unlocking all the secret characters in Jet Set Radio Future, or something like that. While you do unlock characters during the main playthrough, other characters stand out a bit more. The nice thing Sega has done for us is making these personalities playable. Each secret character is tied to completing a level's street challenges, which are revealed after getting the area's mystery tape. Each challenge will unlock a new graffiti soul, and collecting all of the souls in a level unlocks the test runs for that area. Subsequently, getting a jet ranking in each test run category will unlock the character tied to the level. For convenience, we'll cover each area and list their respective challenges, as well as ideal test run scores. But before we jump into everything, here's a couple of tips. Since the challenges range in difficulty, having a fairly balanced character will make your life easier. Beet or Corn are great choices, but some objectives will require more specific skill sets, which will be covered should the situation arise. If you need to rack up a lot of tricks but don't have a lot of rails to use, holding the left analog stick down will slow your character down, allowing you to complete more tricks at a slower speed. While the score won't change with each trick, the game will recognize them individually. Another grinding tip that will help with the score-based objectives, as well as test run, is Y grinding. Normally in the regular game, you would jump on any rail and press the X button to perform tricks and build up your score. For some, it might be difficult to get a high score with X grinding alone, and that's where Y grinding comes in. Once you've built up the highest multiplier with X grinding, pressing Y will increase it from being multiplied by 8 to 16. The timing on Y grind tricks is a bit more difficult, but it will make building up scores and multipliers much easier. Now, onto the levels themselves. Let's start with Shibuya Terminal. Here's how you get the mystery tape. The biggest challenge in this level is arguably the platform challenge, which requires you to jump on all 13 platforms without falling. This objective can be quite buggy, so here's the run that completed it for me. This level is also a good place to try Y grinding, as you'll need to rack up 100,000 points in one combo. Once all the objectives are cleared, you'll need to collect all the graffiti souls in Shibuya Terminal. Now in Test Run, there are four different modes, Jet Dash, Jet Flag, Jet Graffiti, and Jet Tech. Each level has a Jet Graffiti and Jet Tech objective to complete, but depending on the level's layout, i.e. having an open layout versus a linear path, you'll need to clear either Jet Flag or Jet Dash, respectively. For Shibuya Terminal, Jet Flag is relatively easy if you use the rails around the level. Clearing the Test Run for Shibuya Terminal will unlock Zero Beat. The next level on our list is Chuo Street. Here's the mystery tape. The hardest challenge will most likely be reaching the sewer, but it's not too tricky. Grind on the first rail in the back alley, then jump and wall ride the nearest billboard. Make sure to do this without any extra tricks. Repeat this until you make it to the half pipe and you'll unlock the graffiti soul. Here's a couple of hard to reach souls in this level and how to get them. Since Chuo Street is very much linear, you'll need to clear Jet Dash for this level. Use the rails and billboards to your advantage, and don't be afraid to boost Dash if need be. There's also a couple of rails in the level that will be useful for Jet Tech, as they give you 500 points for the first trick rather than 50. Clearing the Chuo Street test run will unlock the sassiest robot in Jet Set Radio, Roboy. Level 3 is Hikage Street and has some of the harder challenges in Jet Set Radio Future. The eastern section of the level is the best place to clear challenges, as it has the most continuous rail as well as a crane. The 300,000 point challenge can be cleared using cube and Y grinding. The overpass with the crane challenge is a bit more robust. First, grind up the crane, then do an air trick onto the top rail. Grind all the way down the rail structure without falling and you'll clear the challenge. This can also be done in the opposite direction, starting on the rail structure, grinding up, then jumping onto the crane. The eastern section also serves as a great spot for jet tech. Clearing the test run for Hikage Street unlocks the Love Shockers. Next up is Rokaku Dai Heights. Here's the mystery tape. The only challenge that's even somewhat difficult is getting the grind up chimney number one. 
It's mostly just climbing up then grinding up the chimney. This level has jet flag as a test run and isn't too complex. The area around the chimney is really useful for jet tech. Clearing the test run for this level unlocks Goji Rokaku. Now we visit the home of Rapid 99, 99th Street. The grind combo and trick challenges should be pretty simple as long as you're using the grind stall trick. Why grinding is also useful for the point challenge. The gates challenge will eat up most of your time. Start at the gate with the kanji for east, then grind all the way around. Once you've made it back to the east gate, fall off the rail. The dragon tower will be very useful for jet tech. Jet flag is a bit more difficult on this level than most, so practice a few times as the flag positions are static. Clearing the test run gives you rapid 99, obviously. The next two levels will be covered together as you'll need to clear both test runs to unlock a character. The Tokyo Underground Sewage Facility and the bottom point of Sewage Facility only have score challenges as the hard challenges, so it'll be a matter of finding rails that start at 500 points. However, some of the graffiti souls can be hard to reach, especially in the regular Sewage Facility. Here's a couple of souls and how to reach them. Jet flag can be a bit ridiculous in the regular sewage facility as it's basically running the level in a very short amount of time. Jet dash in the bottom point can be very frustrating if you don't land on rails or use shortcuts. But if you take your time, you'll clear both test runs and unlock poison jam. Kibogaoka Hill is next on our list and most of the challenges are fairly standard. The ones that might give you issues are the gate challenge and the 250,000 point challenge. For the gate challenge, return to the spot where you originally found Pokey, go off the ramp towards the left power lines and try to hit the inner left line. Regardless of where you land, you're looking for this gate and going through it will give you a graffiti soul to find. The 250,000 point challenge is fairly tough even with the power lines to help you. You'll need to get the timing down with Y grinding for this challenge. With the layout of this level, finding graffiti souls can be tough, so here's a couple of hard to find souls being found. The test runs on this level can be tough because of its relative vastness. Jet Tech has a pretty good area where you can do air tricks and grind tricks. Jet Graffiti will take a long time, but luckily the game is generous with the amount of time needed for a Jet Ranking. Jet Dash might give you some trouble, so try to use Boost Dash as much as possible. Here's a little shortcut if you need it. Clearing Kibo Gauka Hill gets you everybody's favorite dog on wheels, Pots. The next level has relatively easy challenges, but getting the Graffiti Souls is another story. We're talking about the Skyscraper District and Pharaoh Park. The best place to clear the Pharaoh Challenge and the 110,000 Point Challenge is incidentally the middle area with the Pharaoh's Head. For the Pharaoh Challenge, you'll need to grind uninterrupted around the Pharaoh's Head. As long as you don't fall, it should clear the challenge. These rails are also ideal for the Point Combo. This level has some of the hardest graffiti souls to reach in the game. You'll need to be really good at grinding and positioning mid-air, since some of these souls will require you to climb pretty high up. Here's a few of them. The test runs on this level should be pretty easy if you've been clearing the others already. The game places you in the most ideal areas as a starting point, so it should only take a few attempts. Clearing this level unlocks the Immortals. Next up is Highway Zero. The 70 trick challenge can be done using grind stalling, while the wall ride challenge can be tough. Just practice a couple times, and once you get the timing down, you should be able to wall ride six billboards in a row. Jet Tech is ideally done in the night market area, Jet Graffiti is relatively easy, and Jet Dash can be done quickly if you use good techniques and boost dashes when necessary. Clearing Highway Zero adds the noise tanks to your gang. Arguably the most interesting level layout in the entire game, Sky Dinosaurian Square has some pretty easy challenges, the least of them being the Swinging Ride Challenge. You'll need to grind up to the Swinging Ride, 
jump onto it, let it swing to the other side, then grind again for the graffiti soul. The test runs for Sky Dinosaurian Square are fairly easy. Most of the rails will give you 500 points by default for Jet Tech. Jet Dash is easy if you use air combos to create shortcuts. Jet Graffiti might cause some grief as the spray cans are sporadic and the graffiti spots are sectioned off at certain points. With some determination, you should be able to clear them and get NT3000, aka the fake yo-yo. Our final level is the most annoying to climb. That's right, it's the fortified residential zone. The challenges aren't too hard, but you'll need lots of height for the air combo, and the 100 trick combo will require some grind stalling. The giant of metal challenge is fairly easy, you just grind up a giant metal beam. The only test run in this level that's kinda tough is jet flag since the positions of the flags are close, and the game has a very short time to get a jet ranking. If you can practice it a few times, you'll nail down the right timings. Clearing the fortified residential zone will unlock Akumu, and with that, you should have all of the secret characters in Jet Set Radio Future. The unfortunate reality is that many will have already cleared the main story at this point, making these characters usable only for exploring or multiplayer. Hopefully this did help you in your quest to complete Jet Set Radio Future. If you have any questions or even suggestions for more Jet Set Radio content, let me know in the comment section or on social media. If you want to see more Jet Set Radio videos, I've played through Jet Set Radio Future entirely. The link to that is in the description. If you want to see the original Jet Set Radio, my friend Alexa Cat played through the entire game. The link to that is also in the description. I'm False Proof, and I'll see you around. Thank you.